What's that? Progress. It's the new norm. <laughs> This is something I have wanted to talk about for quite a while. I have been uh, I've been shaking with excitement to talk about this brand new animated show that is coming out. Obviously, we all know there's been loads of animated shows out there that we've grown up with. The Simpsons was amazing growing up and then it kind of fell off. I, I mean, I still have like the Treehouse of Horror VHS tapes lying around somewhere in my house. Yes, I'm that old. Family Guy was pretty funny growing up, to be fair. Pretty hilarious. <laughs> and now it fell off. The only time people actually watch Family Guy anymore is when it is the top half of the screen on your phone and the bottom half is either Subway Surfers gameplay or, you know, some kind of like GTA going down a ramp. And then there are shows like South Park that, to be fair, still are actually pretty funny today. I mean, I haven't watched South Park since I was like 12 years old. I actually started watching it again recently. And I mean, not every joke hits. Again, brave statements only on this channel. But I still genuinely think it holds up a lot better than The Simpsons or Family Guy. Again, <laughs> Brave statements only on this channel. Now, this is an animated show that came from the depths of Twitter. Now, I love Twitter. I, I think it's one of the most important social experiments of the century because never have I ever seen a bigger political divide. On the left side of the internet, you have the pronoun people. And on the right side of the internet, you have the trumplets. Now, there's a new show that has came out exclusively to X to Twitter, and it is called The New Norm Show. Get it? Because it's the new norm, because things are more progressive now. Lamar. So this is an adult American animated sitcom, which basically takes inspiration from All in the Family and the Brady Bunch. Again, if you're not 40 years old, you probably have never watched a single episode of either. I mean, to be fair, I make that joke, but like I'm 27 years old and I still end up watching like reruns of Frasier, which is a, a very good sitcom, actually. I do recommend it. Now, back in the 25th of June, they actually did premiere a pilot episode, you know, a, a little bit of a preview to, to, to get you ready and prepared for the amount of keynote you're about to witness. <laughs> Now, before the full series came out, there were loads of websites and stuff and articles being able to, you know, read a little bit more into it. I mean, there's loads of connections here to people like uh, Bill Mayer, uh, Larry Elder, Dave Rubin, JP Sears, Kevin Sorbo. I'll be honest, one of the main reasons I wanted to talk about this show, because I mean, you can tell, right, by clicking on this video and by just the general premise, it's going to be left people le bad. I'll be honest, it's that bad of a show that even people on the right ended up hating this. Like, for example, Asmongold, right? I, I know, like, the, the biggest takes he kind of has is wow that's crazy but he watched it and he even said himself how does this like alienate both sides of the political spectrum how can no one find this entertaining this show could be so funny wait is this it's not ironic no if this is satire i don't know who they're making fun of Damn. i don't know and now as you can imagine the concept of norm is this old man called norm he looks a little bit like the old guy from up a little bit maybe if he took away the glasses and he does not like how woke <laughs> The entire world is becoming... <laughs> you know, everything in this world is becoming woke. Apparently, even his beer is now gay. It's becoming woke. <laughs> He's surrounded by his open-minded uh, daughter, uh, his wife. He apparently has this anti-woke bus and also is on house arrest for being too offensive at his daughter's school. And in return, Norm, God, th th this plot... This plot is going to get more convoluted than Dark Souls or Elden Ring item descriptions. Just, just hear me out. Norm is welcomed by his non-binary roommate named Chaz, who has to basically stay with Norm and his family and convert him into being woke by the government. <laughs> Now, looking at archived versions of the website, like older versions of the website before they made changes, the entire series plotline would apparently, you know, revolve around such adventures like going to woke Disney World. And I'm not saying woke Disney World like Disney World, but it's woke. They literally called it themselves woke Disney World. There was also another one as well, apparently like like falling in love with AI, like the plotline of her with uh, Joaquin Phoenix. Actually, pretty good film, to be fair. Uh, transitioning genders. I think they were doing like a two part trans thing. And then even the possibility of dealing with being an influencer during quarantine. Now, these aren't revolutionary concepts by, you know, any means. I mean, a lot of them have been done to death before. I mean, even South Park that I, you know, said at the beginning, I shilled it a bit saying it's really good. It's pop culture. It's trend chasing. It's going whatever is relevant and popular. Cred is 100% sugar free. Cred has electrolytes so you can ride your bike. And also Cred has more vitamin A than your body could possibly 
never use. I mean, to be fair, though, the one reason I'll always be in South Park's corner is because they made a gag about Casa Bonita, the, the Mexican restaurant, and then they actually ended up buying the place and refurbishing it. So it just looks a million times better. But I mean, to be fair, when you're watching a show like this, you're not really looking for deep, insightful commentary. I mean, Jesus, like one of the episodes basically ends on a D's nuts joke. I almost forgot. So no surprise when the show was announced publicly, people weren't entirely sold on it. Now, a lot of people did actually draw the comparisons to South Park, basically saying it's like, okay, so you took South Park and then you, you removed the funny. So now you just have South Park and then you add unfunny. Wh 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 where's the funny? Also, the funny thing is about the new norm is it had to actually be crowdfunded on X, which is like, uh, honestly, I think there is more like uh, AI porn on X than like actual porn websites. And again, another comparison here. I talked about like South Park, the, the creators, you know, buying Casa Bonita and like doing it up. They've done other things, a lot of more successful things, like for example, uh, even a Broadway play at one point. I didn't even know until looking into this that, you know, the Book of Mormon, that thing you just see advertised absolutely everywhere, that Broadway play, even though you don't really watch Broadway plays, it still shilts you relentlessly. It's a play by Matt Stone and Trey Parker, the guys that made South Park. Now, obviously, because Twitter's Twitter, a lot of people did not like the Norm show for how uh, anti-woke it was. I'm not even saying that as a bit. It was basically self-stating that it was anti-woke. A lot of people tried to bat back by creating their own like uh, gay head cannons and, and their own personas. They also ended up doing like fan art as well to make the uh, anti-woke characters look more woke. Now the Twitter account for the new norm, like any brand account on earth knows it has to insert itself into whatever the trending thing is to maintain relevancy. That's why, for example, if you see like a, a viral TikTok, you'll have Google reply being like, um, that was pretty freaking epic, Lois. And then the uploader of the TikTok will either say, oh my God, Google, you're here. Or they'll tell them to basically piss off. For example, you might know that stunt that Kai Sinat pulled where he had like a bunch of fireworks in his room and he basically set them all off. They replied to that with like a, a firework safety awareness video. They also did 4th of July quote tweets for people like Larry Elder or Linda Yaccarino, who's actually the current CEO of Twitter. And of course, they tweet at Elon Musk pretty much nonstop. You know that meme with Game Theory and the guys that made Hello Neighbor and how they were basically falling off and they just kept <laughs> tweeting at Matt Pat over and over saying, Matt Pat would like this one. He'd like to break down this game theory because obviously a lot of like small horror creators know that their entire lifeline is basically just given from Matt Pat doing like videos to basically boost numbers, boost interest through YouTube and then people buy the game. They needed Matt Pat as a lifeline. So they were basically rent free adding him. The norm account is basically doing the same thing right now with Elon Musk. It's like, please, please give us a bit give us a bit more funding, please. Just a small amount of funding, please. They've also tried their attempt at comedy. Like, for example, if you dead name, like, like a trans person, you know, saying the name that they used to run with before they transitioned, they put their own spin on it, basically saying that, like, calling Twitter Twitter and not X is is dead naming it. I really do like the, uh, the picture for this meme as well. Graphic design is my passion. I actually opened MS Paint for this one, boys. Now, I have been a negative Nelly this entire time, but you know what? I want to give this show a little bit of credit. It really doesn't seem by looking through the episode it's as AI generated as people are saying. Because if you look at behind the scenes, they actually provide, you know, multiple time lapse sketches as well as older versions of the websites where characters were drawn uh, from a rig that could be like puppeted and stuff. Pretty much how like every single animated show works now. If anything, it's giving really heavy F is for family vibes, which is like this kind of like off brand family guy show on Netflix. Now, I know I've probably angered a lot of people by saying F is for family is kind of mid. I'll be honest, I love Bill Burr. I think he's a great comedian. I even loved him, you know, in his small little cameos in Breaking bad but there's only so many times that you can i i le scream at le family le laugh now <laughs> i le scream it's so true though. That's literally the entire show. But obviously people weren't buying it and they still tried to scrutinize the show as much as they could. Uh, one example that people found very, very quickly, this can of beer. Now this gay beer, get it, the joke, because it has the, the funny queer colors on it, Lamau. Now this is listed as New Century Beverage Co. on the can. Now for context, New Century is known for other brands, like for example, uh, Mug Root Beer. And then as people began to dig deeper, they found out that what's most likely happened is they actually basically just an, an underpaid paid animator ripped the nutritional and ingredient information from an actual mug root beer. And looking into that from a meta perspective, that technically does mean that Norm is right. His beer has gone woke because it's, you know, meant to be alcohol. It's meant to be beer. But if it's actually root beer, it's non-alcoholic. So maybe, maybe Norm's onto something. I mean, another great example is when Elon Musk is introduced and there's this kind of like Western theme song that's playing in the background that is literally like an appello that is taken from a text-to-speech program Thank God for Elon Musk. 
Wars. Now, Norm is not the first example of these kind of like, you know, anti-woke cartoons. I mean, for example, there's a television network called Bent Key that's owned by the Daily Wire, and they've done very bizarre rip-offs of like already successful shows. Like, for example, uh, you know, Bluey, the kids show that teaches like life lessons and stuff. Uh, they had their own rip-off of that, which was called Chip Chiller. They also had one, I think, called Mr. Bertram, which basically just looks like family. No, no, no. It doesn't look like family guy at home. It looks like F is for family at home. I think to be fair, Mr. Bertram is them trying to do like a modern take on, for example, uh, King of the Hill while having the same art style as like Brickleberry. But again, why would you want the same art style as Brickleberry? Now, is this entire video crying and saying uh, conservative cartoons le bad? Definitely not. Definitely not. If they're done well, they can be funny, especially if they're self-aware. But so many of these shows are trying to capture, you know, uh, old South Park, old Family Guy, uh, King of the Hill, and they just completely fail to do so. The best kind of comedy is when you can make fun of someone, but also be completely self aware that you're basically like nowhere near any better again it's pretty obvious i'm a shill i'm sorry about that but south park i like it so much because it'll mock current things but then basically you know play it over to the point that if you were to even mock it in the first place you're the moron i just think overall it's amazing they said legalized humor and then they made a show without any <laughs>